the amount of organic material, it's fantastic. Are we going? Let's see, zoom that out. I'm still getting used to this camera. So it's early February, we've had a really wet summer here in New Zealand, and the sun is finally out, the sun is shining now, and so we're gonna get to doing a really big chop and drop on this just over one year old agroforestry food forest system. I'll show you some footage beforehand from what it looked like earlier on, uh, but now what we'll do is we'll make some observations, just see kind of what's going on in the different strata layers and just some details of this actual food forest system, and then we'll get into the chopping and dropping. So hold tight, we'll do some observations, check things out, and then get into the big intervention. Let's do it. But just to orient you guys, this is the south side of the row. These rows run east to west, and over here, this is the north side. You can see the north side is predominantly this Mexican sunflower right here. Um, and that's to give a lot of shelter to all the species in the understory to really help with the kaikuyu, the grass pressure. And so we'll go take a look at what the backside looks like. There's a lot of bananas on the backside. They're kind of just offset off the main tree line. Along with a lot of these Queensland arrowroot, you can kind of see those are placed in space between each of the bananas, just as an extra biomass crop. But if we come in here and look down into the understory, you can see there's very little grass pressure in here, which is helping all these young tree seedlings to survive quite beautifully. They're not growing as much as they would necessarily if they had a lot more sunlight. That's the trade-off with using the Mexican sunflower to keep the kaikuyu pressure out. You can see there's really no grass pressure in here. There's lots of organic material that's been able to be built up, especially around these bananas where the Mexican sunflower is chopped on a regular basis, along with these tree lucerne. Those are the two main support species that have been really active with the chop and drop in this system so far, is the really high density of tree lucerne and the Mexican sunflower, and obviously the Queensland arrowroot provides a lot of organic material as well. There's some bana grass in here, and there's also some eucalypts, which haven't quite come online yet in terms of biomass production, they're still growing. This system is only about 15 months old, and so it's already has produced lots of organic material compared to this system, which was planted a whole year beforehand. This was my first experiment, this is the trial, and I realized it didn't have enough tree biomass from the start. And so that's why I planted this system so dense. This system, there's a tree lucerne every single meter, and in between that, there's a eucalypt every meter. So really half meter spacings for the support trees. And then we've got all the arrowroot, we've got all the Mexican sunflower. So this system is absolutely loaded with organic material, and you can kind of see that, the results of that, in the understory. You can see there's lots of really rich, rich organic soil under here. The seedlings are doing well, everything's growing, but it is time for that intervention. We've just had a ton of rain, the soil is really moist, so we'll get after it and do some pruning now. So there's a really high density of edible trees on this tree line, just the middle row of trees. We've got mulberries right here, we've got cherimoyas, there's ice cream beans, more cherimoyas and adamoyas. There's also the white sapote, there's sugarcane, there's loquats, and so there's a high diversity of trees all grown from seeds in that whole midline, which are slowly growing, protected from these fast-growing support species. We've also got some grafted avocados in here um, as a target crop as well, so choose some artichokes. So yeah, we'll get after this chop and drop. And here's a cool example of how the Mexican sunflower re-sprouts after a big chop and drop. You can see where I've made these cuts and now it's starting to re-sprout just a week later. So those are growing pretty quick at the moment. Uh, middle of summer, lots of moisture. This is on the previous row that got a cut last week. You can see the eucalypts up there. Yeah, it's regrowing quickly. So I'm about halfway through managing the front edge of this Mexican sunflower. This is the side that's unpruned, you can see that right here. And this over here is a side that I've just come through and given a really heavy prune on the north side of that Mexican sunflower too. And I want to show you a detail of the Mexican sunflower being on the northern side of the row. Because the sun is coming from the north side and that's where a lot of the kaikuyu pressure is coming from, I'm allowing these Mexican sunflower to grow quite lopsided. And what I mean by that is I want them to kind of hang over on the north edge and smother as much of this kaikuyu as possible, right? Because you can see where the Mexican sunflower is allowed to really grow, there's not a whole lot of grass pressure and the further back, the further south you go of the Mexican sunflower, the less grass pressure there is. So that leads to your midline, your tree line, having as little grass pressure as possible when you allow your Mexican sunflower to kind of overhang to the north. But what I am doing for the management, you can kind of see I'm allowing it to hang over on the north edge, but on the back edge, I don't want it to be smothering the tree line. And so I'm actually kind of pruning it to be lopsided. So it's almost vertical on the back side and it kind of slopes north on the front. So here's kind of what I mean about not 
much grass pressure underneath. And as you move further south, you can see the seedlings have very little grass pressure kind of sitting behind the Mexican sunflower. So it works as a beautiful way to kind of keep the grass, especially this kaikuyu, this stuff is gnarly, keep the kaikuyu off your fruit trees by planting the Mexican sunflower on the north edge and managing it, pulse pruning it, chopping that organic material, feeding the tree line, feeding your bananas, but also managing it to allow the sunlight in for your younger fruit trees. So that's a tip on managing your Mexican sunflower on the north edge of your agroforestry food forest project. So what I'm doing here is I'm chopping the Mexican sunflower, I'm standing on the north edge, and basically I'm using the machete and I'm cutting armfuls of the Mexican sunflower, folding it into packets, and then from there I'm tossing it through the row onto the bananas that are on the south edge, so it's feeding the bananas, and I'm chopping to allow light into the understory. So I've gone through and I've chopped down all the herbaceous layers, the Mexican sunflower, the comfrey, and the Queensland arrowroot on the south side. Dropped all of that organic material, stacked it around all the bananas. Now I'm going to stratify the tree layers and so do the woody biomass. I probably should have done that first, I probably should have pruned the trees and then buried that carbon material underneath the herbaceous layer. That's how you get the best moisture retention and breakdown of of the woody material. And every single time I prune, I realize and I make adjustments in my head for the next for the next intervention, thinking, okay, I should do this differently. So let's get to pruning these tree lucerne. Probably not much of the eucalypts because they're still they're still quite young, so I don't need to prune the eucalypts that much. But these tree lucerne, man, they just grow so quickly. I can really give them hammering. You can see even here, if I take if I take this branch entirely off, this will respart into an entirely new tree. And so, really, I'm going to hack a lot of this organic material off. And the idea here is to stratify the layers. So these are just tree lucerne branches that are really easy to kind of process down into usable pieces with a machete. All you really need to do is go with the grain, because they kind of naturally fall like that. And if you just swipe the machete down, it just strips all the branches off really nicely. And then everything lays flat, and that's kind of what you're wanting. You're wanting all the material to lay snug onto the ground. You don't really want levitating, levitating branches, so you kind of want to compress as much of that material as you can onto the soil. Let's check it out. So we've got an ester avocado here and you can see this mound of mulch on the backside and we'll kind of just peel this away and see how much organic material there really is before you reach the soil. That's probably about, I would say 30, 30 centimeters of organic material before you reach the soil. So that's what you're looking for. There's also a little ice cream ice cream beans in there, there's cherimoya. So that mound of organic material goes all the way along the whole back edge now. Feeding the bananas and feeding those trees, keeping the moisture locked in. Boom. This is what everything looks like after the big prune. You can see there's a lot more stratification. All that organic material is now laying along the outside edge of the row. It's feeding the bananas, it's feeding the fruit trees, it's keeping that moisture locked in because we just had about like four weeks of rain. It's been a really, really wet summer. And so now all that organic material is locking that moisture in. It's a really thick layer of organic material too. It's like 30 centimeters. And that's gonna keep all that moisture locked in. It's gonna get that soil biology activated. It's really gonna keep these plants happy for the last part of summer. And so I'm really excited. You can see just an absolute mountain of organic material underneath each of these bananas. Under the bananas is probably closer to 40 centimeters of organic material. The Mexican sunflower, some eucalypts, tree lucerne, the Queensland arrowroot come free. There's all sorts of organic material that we've just gone and chopped and everything is really stratified as well. You can see there's a lot more sunlight coming onto these trees in the understory. That's going to give them a big surge and everything is just going to absolutely take off. And some things might get a little sunburnt because they've been used to the shade, but that's going to be okay. So here's the key takeaway. Your main job in a food forest during these interventions is to be a windstorm. Now think about it. Ordinarily, a windstorm is what accelerates succession forward. You have trees that break in these windstorms, they, they prune themselves, and then that light comes down into the understory. And those trees in the understory have that growth because they get more sunlight. There's that growth hormone that happens when you prune the trees. And so essentially what you're doing is you're managing the ecological succession of your food forest with intentional pruning and timely, timely pruning 
you're managing that succession, marching it forward, right? You have the whole species lineup, you have the early succession, you have the medium succession, and the long term, like the really long lived fruit trees, all in the same system. And so when you come through every few months or every month, or depending on whatever your cycle is, you're coming through and you're being that major disturbance. You're acting like that windstorm, you're pruning a bunch of trees, you're organizing all of that organic material, and you're doing it in a really thoughtful way. You're pruning things to maximize photosynthesis. You're letting light down into the understory so it reaches these young trees. They get that boost of growth at the peak of summer. There's all that soil moisture because we lock the soil moisture in with all that pruning. The soil biology activates because all that new material is there for them to feed on. It's a really exciting system. Once you kind of get into the swing of things and you kind of understand, once you start understanding the ecology behind these systems, it gets really exciting to come in and give things a massive prune. It's also just a lot of fun to prune with a machete, so that's that's part of it. But man, beyond that, even just the tree health and everything looks so vigorous. The amount of organic material that I haven't now had to go wheel around with a wheelbarrow, it's fantastic. No pushing wheelbarrows around, just pruning trees. The nitrogen fixing nature of these trees as well, these trees are in the nitrogen fixers. Every time you prune a nitrogen fixing tree, along with these acacias, these acacias are also nitrogen fixing, and I've taken about maybe 80% of the acacias out, maybe 90% of the tree lucerne, I can prune them really heavily. And so when you prune these nitrogen fixing trees, they dump nitrogen into the soil, right? Because as you prune a tree, it sheds roots. And so there's so many knock-on effects that are happening when you prune these trees. A, you're letting more sunlight into the understory. B, you're dropping that organic material down to lock that moisture in, feed the soil biology. But also when you have the nitrogen fixing trees, they're releasing that nitrogen. It's a big, huge flush of nitrogen into the soil on top of the growth hormone. I think it's called gibberellin. And it just activates everything and everything boosts when you give a really heavy chopping rope. So that's what we've just done. You can see the difference. I'll send the drone up and I'll also show some footage of when this system was originally planted, when we did that first spring intervention. I think this is the third, maybe the fourth, but I think it's the third intervention of the season. We'll take a look and see kind of what that progression has looked like up until now. But I'm really pumped, man. The system's coming along really nicely. These bananas are putting on some heft. They were absolutely demolished in winter. I, I pruned things way too early. We had like a surprise frost early spring and so, I came through and I pruned everything. I thought it was spring and I opened it all up and then boom, we got a frost and all these gold fingers just absolutely got smoked. And so they've come back really nicely and they're looking pretty good. This one on the end is certainly the happiest. It's, it's definitely taller than me, so two meters tall, two meters plus. And all the trees in the understory as well, they're quite happy, so. zoom that out. I'm still getting used to this camera. That's the update. This is the really high density tree system. Probably the highest density tree system I've got here. It was really experimental but it's coming along really nicely. I'm loving the amount of organic material. The turnover into the soil is fantastic. You can see the results really well. The trees are performing beautifully so absolutely go plant an agroforestry system. Plant lots of these support trees so you have something to chop down. If I had only planted like I think I planted maybe 30 tree lucerne, 30 eucalypts. If I had only planted half as many, I would only have half as much organic material to be pumping into the soil. And if the point of these systems is to build your soil, to build that natural fertility, you want to overload it with your support species on the upfront, because you can always prune them out, you can always take them out later, you can always cut them down after year two or three if you don't want to manage them that much or if they start crowding. But it's better to go really heavy on your support species up front, because they're also really cheap trees. And it's better to go heavy so you can then prune the crap out of things and really get that material turnover happening in the soil rather than going really sparse with your trees. Go heavy on your support species and plant beautiful agroforestry systems. Hope that was useful. I'll catch you next time. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to answer them. And I'll show you guys some other systems in the next few days. I'll show you more of the other agroforestry systems. This is just an update for this particular row just because that's kind of what I was managing today. So I'll do more regular updates and catch up soon. Peace. Now I've also got a few lucuma seeds that I'm going to add into this row. You can just pop seeds in whenever you want. It's seedlings that you want to wait until you're doing an intervention, but I just happen to have these seeds and I'm already over here in the row, so we'll pop these seeds into this row. Basically anywhere along the midline, so you can just kind of find a spot and just push your seeds into the ground. We'll pop that seed right next to the mushroom. There's a spot 